we've always had dogs in my family. And um, everyone spoke to the dog in a language, you know, because that's what you do when you have a dog. Um, so literally, even my Eastern European Jewish grandmother in Yiddish would go, Yoy, vustis the dog chunye. And so every, I talk like this to the dog because that dog talk, it called Vrnslach. That's how you got to talk to dogs. So I think it sort of came from making silly voices at dogs. And then by 20, 18, 19, 20, I was doing voiceover, and it just sort of came naturally because it was fun to make silly voices. God, I played, it was a pilot for uh, Dr. Doolittle, and uh, it was still while I was in Canada, but then some, and I played uh, the little boy in it in Canada. Um, and then I came here, and they were redoing it. They decided to cast me as a little girl. So I think that might have been the first voiceover, but I don't really remember. I think the very, very first actually was a commercial, and it was like this little bunny rabbit for, it wasn't Energizer, but it was a little rabbit talked like this and talked really, really fast. I don't remember the product. Take acting class, take improv class, separately. Always do that, because it just frees you up, it opens, it opens you up, and take, take a few seminars and take privates. I started doing this actually as a financial thing because people couldn't afford it, you know? So I put two people in the room and do partner reads, both animation, commercial re reads where there's two people in the scene, um, and then break it up a little and give each of them the announcer at the end. So it's kind of, you're getting half a lesson time-wise, but in a way, um, it's very edifying because you're seeing me critique somebody else, and when I'm critiquing that person, you're not on the hot seat. So your brain is learning how to direct listening to me direct. Having a couple of people in the room, they each learn how to uh, self-direct by learning to direct. And I actually have them directing each other. You know, there's a lot of screaming and yelling in video games. Die! Die! There's, there's a lot of vocal work that is really difficult and you have to know how to use your voice properly. Um, there's a lot more drama in video games. Mostly, you know, animation is comedic most of the time. And if it's not fully comedic, it's archer-like comedic. You know, it's not, uh, uh, it's ironic. <laughs> um, and video games are usually very serious. I did, I've done a lot of learning um, uh, DVDs also, you know, the leapfrog stuff, that kind, of, that kind of thing. And that's a whole other thing. That's all for little kids, you know, so it's, I actually love voicing stuff for little teeny kids. There's something really freeing about how silly you can be, you know? I think the thing most people don't know about voice acting is it really has nothing to do with, with the sound of your voice. Because I cannot tell you how many people have said to me, everyone tells me I have a fabulous voice or I have a